Hello, good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are in the world. I'm Katie and this is episode 27 of Art Snaps, the series which celebrates Swindon's collection of modern and contemporary British art and it is really a rather wonderful collection and really really worth shouting about. So in each episode I spend 10 minutes talking about a small selection of artworks from the collection. If you're a regular listener then thank you very much for being a regular listener. If you're brand new to Art Snaps, then welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Art Snaps kind of started off as a weekly lockdown podcast, and now it's slightly less regular because we've been finding other exciting ways of sharing the, the art collection, which lessens the time I have to make these. But it's great to see that people are still very much listening to both new and past episodes. And speaking of new episodes, let's get to the point and start this one. At the time of recording, it's October half term, which means we're very much looking forward to Halloween, a time to celebrate things that are a bit weird and wonderful in the world, or not of this world. So we've been putting out lots of posts on social media, all of our artworks in the collection, which have something dark or surreal or otherworldly about them. And today I want to focus on that word surreal in relation to three great pieces from Swindon's art collection, including the one that's on the screen right now by Desmond Morris, which I'll discuss in a moment. First, though, I want to tell you a little bit about surrealism and what that word actually means. Surrealism is an artistic, literary and philosophical movement which emerged in the 1920s in response to theories about the unconscious mind. Surrealist artists embrace the idea that art doesn't need to be shaped by reason, but something more instinctual. And they enjoyed creating artworks and objects which were unexpected, uncanny and unconventional. And as a result, they created some of the most fantastically bizarre and important artworks of the 20th century. And their influence and attitude still seeps into much creativity today. In this episode, I'm going to talk about three artists whose work has a real sense of the surreal about it. Through artworks from Swindon's collection, we'll see how their unique artistic vision transports us to another world. The first artist I want to look at is Desmond Morris, who was actually born right here in Wiltshire in 1928 and is now known as a broadcaster, a zoologist and a sociobiologist. Some of you out there might actually know him as the author of a rather famous book called The Naked Ape. And, of course, he's a very talented surrealist painter who's known for his vibrant biomorphic forms. So a fascination with human behaviour is really at the centre of Desmond Morris's career. The Mysterious Gift from 1965 is quite an early piece, which presents, as you can see, a rather unusual looking still life. And it's hard to tell exactly what it is that's presented and it's very much open to interpretation. I recently got the chance to ask Morris about his thoughts on this work and he described it as a wine glass resting on top of a column. But of course, as Morris himself pointed out, once you realise that the stem of this vessel-like object is a bone, your perception of the piece is blown wide open. Anything is possible, and the wonder of this is that you project your own thoughts and ideas onto it, and there's no right or wrong answer. As the title suggests, the beauty is in the mystery of these objects. The final thing I want to mention about this piece is the way that it's been painted. Morris was being very experimental here. He actually flipped the canvas around and painted on the back of it, directly onto the raw, unprimed surface. And he did this because at the time he was friendly with the artist Francis Bacon, who painted on the backs of canvases because he liked the way the paint dragged across the surface. So Morris gave this a go too, and he told me that out of 3,400 paintings that he has painted during his life, this is the only one where he experimented with this technique. So it's fabulous to have this unique painting in Swindon's collection with an interesting art historical anecdote attached to it. And I also can't help but feel that there's something of a rebellious, surrealist tendency in this unconventional flipping of the canvas. 
The next artwork I want to look at is John Greenwood's brilliant and bizarre painting, Rings and Strings and Things, from 1991. Greenwood is associated with the Young British Artists, which was a group of young, rebellious postgraduate students who took the art world by storm in the late 1980s and 90s with their subversive and groundbreaking art. And of course, most of them are still very popular and still creating very shocking work today. As you can see, this is an intensely unusual and imaginative painting, which takes us into a kind of dreamlike world filled with bodily forms which twist and leak and pulsate like a fleshy factory of the fantastical. It's as if we're offered a glimpse through a window which takes us into a room or perhaps a shop display. And this could be a nod to the 17th century Spanish still life painting, which Greenwood is so fond of. But of course, what we can see here is far from still. It kind of feels like a grotesque performance of a human machine, which is at once fascinating and repulsive. I was actually thrilled that during my research for this episode, I came across an interesting quote from Greenwood, which really pulled together all of this imagery for me. He said, quote, I think of the work as showing an invasive display of things that are personal, while at the same time recognising that what is considered private always exists as part of a wider public realm. No neat boundaries exist between the two. Unquote. I think this idea that the body in all its excess is positioned in an awkward space between the private and the public is what makes rings and strings and things so unsettling yet compelling to look at. On top of this, Greenwood has an exceptional talent for creating believable image out of things constructed from his imagination. The semi-human fleshy forms are rendered with great clarity and illusionism and the precisely painted textures and liquids just about evade our perception. So there's a kind of uncomfortable juxtaposition between realism and imagination in this piece. I want to round off by talking about Monster Chetwind's Cat People Collage number three. Monster Chetwind is a fascinating artist who combines visual imagery from an eclectic range of sources and really embraces an amateurish, playful and expressive visual language. But despite its playful, carnivalesque nature, her work deals with a number of contemporary moral issues. The piece on the screen is one of three Cat People collages which are in Swindon's collection. And this group of work is inspired by the Cat People films from 1942 and 1982, which are about a woman who believed herself to be a descendant of a race of people who turn into cats when angered or sexually aroused. While celebrating these low budget erotic horror movies, Monster Chetwind pokes fun at the hierarchies of the imagery in art history and the commercial arena. I have to admit I'm not 100% sure of the image sources for this collage, particularly the nude male figure who's being attacked by a bird, which seems to have once had a woman's face, but it's been replaced by that of a lion. I didn't have time to get in touch with the artist and ask where this came from before recording this episode. And since I find it hard to let these things go, I did try to find a source for these fascinating figures. They look to me like something created by the romantic minds of Henry Fuseli or William Blake. But I can't find a piece by either of them that matches, even though both of them created work full of beautiful and fantastic levitating figures. The imagery itself could allude to the figure of the siren in Greek mythology, which is sometimes represented as a winged female figure who lures sailors to their death. Or it could relate to the Sphinx, which is often depicted as part woman, part bird and part lion. And she's a figure, again in Greek mythology, who is known to have killed those who couldn't answer her riddle. Anyways, I've gone on way too long about this, but if anyone wants to join the bandwagon in guessing at the source of this image, please do leave a comment. Or even better, if you recognise it and know the answer, definitely leave us a comment. 
Either way, in the spirit of Halloween, I leave you with this fun game of guess which monster Monster Chetwind has depicted. Thanks very much for listening to me delve into the beautifully surreal world of these three artists. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you take care and stay safe and I'll say bye for now.